Hello, everyone, and welcome to another live Wednesday night fly tying that we are starting just a little bit late. Katie and I just drove in from Knoxville, Tennessee. We had the pleasure of visiting Smoky Mountain Angler right as, uh, <clears throat> as we were going to leave Knoxville, but we wanted to um, get back here in time to see you guys. So if you're joining us live, thank you very, very much. If you're not joining us live, we'd love to see you every Wednesday night, roughly nine o'clock Eastern time. Uh, we sit around tie flies and um, learn a thing or two. I know I've learned something and um, I'm pretty sure you guys have picked up a tip here and there. So because we literally just walked in the house, Katie is putting some stuff together. We're getting cameras oriented and straightened and um, audio going. I hope you guys can hear us okay. Cool. <laughs> Joe can. Um, so tonight we've got a um, one pattern that I wanted to. So what's up? Uh, Joe, Howie, Al, and Jimmy. And everyone else has been chatting. I think I saw Steve on here earlier. Um, so we're going to tie Lance Egan's Frenchie to start with. Now this is one because the pattern is so, as far as materials wise, it's so simple. Um, whenever we go, um, whenever we go and we're traveling somewhere and I've got my tying kit, I always have some wire pheasant tail and, um, some sort of flash dub, some ice dub. And I can tie Frenchies all day long and they work all the time. And it's a good base. You can throw some CDC on there. You can do a lot of different things with it. But is well, good evening, Mike and Jeff. Long time no chat. Bullex. So hopefully it's just pausing for you, not everyone else. FUD and Wes hikes the Smokies. What's happening, Wes? We need to get to, I will be in the Smokies this weekend. But actually, I'll be leaving to go to South Carolina again. Saturdays, maybe Sunday we'll be able to fish. Um, but this is a, a pattern that uh, really, if you haven't mastered this, you need to, to look at the basics of um, of how to tie this fly. Um, and this is this is it right here. So we're going to spin up, and this is just the standard, no bells, no whistles, just what I consider uh, properly tied, proper proportion maybe a hair big on the um uh the ice dubbing there for the the shrimp pink ice dub but for the most part um correctly tied frenchy uh there's a few things that i look for when when i'm tying frenchies only sure i avoid number one is um let's try to find a good pointer is the body itself is thin we want it to be we 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 don't want a big chunky, chunky body and it can be no taper to a slight taper, obviously bigger towards the bead. You can see this has got just a very slight taper. Um, another thing is the, the hot spot or the, the, um, the shrimp pink here. Um, <clears throat> this needs to be prominent that you can see it, but like it doesn't need to be covered up by the thread, but it could be half this size and be okay. Sometimes, you know, I see some that half the body, half of it's like the thorax. And that's really just supposed to be a hot spot. And, um, of course, the, the thread is another option there, having the, um, the different color thread that, that contrasts and provides even a second little, little hot spot. I'll time with those and without those. And, um, and that's really up, up to you. And, obviously, I have these all set up nice and pretty. Had a bunch of these tied, different colors and different things. And right when we we're getting ready, we dropped them. <laughs> and we had big, we had flies going everywhere. So um, unfortunately, it didn't, didn't turn out too good as a show and what we've been working on type thing. So without further ado, let's get cracking on the uh, on the Frenchie as Katie is getting set up. So I'm going to start with my last um umqua xc 400 bl one left and we're going to pair the 14 with a 3.5 millimeter tungsten bead in gold so 
I've got these little pop top things. I keep the commonly used colors of beads thing and um, common colors, common sizes. Uh, and as a general rule, I need to put my sunglasses, my sunglasses, orange. If you use an orange, uh, it, it just, yes, you could. I would probably go with, um, if I was going to use one of those bright be bright orange beads. I really like, and don't tell anyone, UV dark olive. I think it's a really good good color to contrast with the uh, that bright orange bead. But that's just just an idea. But yeah, I, I wouldn't go too overboard on super bright. Everything's good grief. It looks straight to me, but it looks crooked to you. We put crooked for me, so it's straight for you. Uh, good, good statement there, Al. And now I need to find. You guys think I'm joking about just sitting down? No. Nope. All right, find a. So we have a coq de lion feather right here. This is. This might be a ginger pardo. It might be a. I don't know what color. It might just be a, a medium pardo. I don't know, but it's one I had sitting right here. So that's what we're going to use. And for a size 14, I like six to about six fibers. A seven's fine. Five's okay. Um, let's see what we got. One, two, three. It might be a couple extra. So let's see if I can find anything. There we go. All right. So we've got our, our feather here. See, I'm just holding these out, grab it like so. And you see when I pull, I'm going to pull the stem away from my finger. So I pull like this and see those little curlies there. See, that those are the butt ends. And when I pinch those together, you see me see my pinch me like that and pull out, my tips are lined up. So that's what we're going for are my tips being lined up. My butts, typically my butts are lined up, my tips are lined up. And before you do all this, you need to put thread on the hook. If not, you're just wasting your time. <laughs> Too bad Gary's on here. He'd been like, you forgetting something? All right. So I'm going to pull this on like that. And I'm going to try to do this without, um, without putting this down. So I'm, I'm just going to hold this up. Good day. We start early. It's an hour. We had time change, Ken. So it is an hour. We actually started a little bit late. But um, so we, our time changed. It is 930 already here. You're going to have to drive faster stress and John out driving slow. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the wire we use is a 0.2 millimeter bright gold. And why you might say, did I am I pulling the wire out now while I've already pulled the tail material out? It's because I should not pull the tail material out quite yet. And I'm trying to do this one-handed now. That makes it fun. Good. See, so, you, so you'll be able to watch a little bit earlier. Hopefully you don't want to you don't have to get up too early. And you'll be able to watch the whole thing or close to it anyway. All right, so I'm take my wire and I'm gonna stick it right into. I haven't put the tail in. This is one thing I do different. I haven't put the tail in. I haven't gone back all the way. I just stick my wire in that bead like this, and I do one kind of loose wrap because I want to keep that wire on the side to the bottom. So like it's kind of on the far side towards the bottom. And I'm gonna hold this down and wrap back. I want to keep that wire all the way. See, that's on the bottom. So when I make that first wrap underneath, it's not going to disturb the tail. Now we're coming back to my tail that, that I wrapped in. And I'm just going to do a pinch wrap. I'm not worried about the length so much. Come down like this. Bring this back. Make sure we got it right where we want it. And we do. I'm going to make sure my tail is the right length. Now, I'm going to watch the camera. I'm going to try to anyway. And let's put my bead. So I like the tail to be about the same length as everything you see is red there. So the body itself, not including the bead. 
dry flop. So that's about where my finger is right there is the tip of the tail to the, to the edge of the bead right there. It's about the same length. Um, a lot of times you'll see them really long. And I don't think it makes that whole much, like it's not make that much of a difference. It's a little bit long, but just to do it right, that's kind of the, the length that I like. I think I just shortened it up even more, but that's all right. Think about dry flies. Dry flies have got nice, long, pretty tails. Um, nymphs typically are not going to have like a super, super long tail. It's like waiting for a little of prayer. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Or Alf. Okay. So we've got one layer of thread down, one layer of thread back, and we've got two materials completely tied in. We've got our tail and we've got a wire tied in. See how the tail is probably is, is it's not short, but see how it's roughly the same length as the body. And we've got a wire tied in the opposite side. Now, next thing we need to tie in is the um, pheasant tail. And this is, we're going to take this off the same way. So we're going to pull off four fibers. And on a size 14, four is enough. When I get to size 16 and 18, so we'll do three. Um, I don't like going less than three because if I break one off, I can still do it. I can still make it work with two. Um, but on a 14, I kind of need that additional fiber for the width. So four fibers, pull it off. See, I've got that. If I've got like that one's got a bunch of bunch of curlies on there, cut them off. And now I'm going to take just the tip right there, just the tip. I'm going to flatten out my thread, cross it over, do kind of a loose wrap. Do a couple wraps. I'm gonna pull this until its tips disappear, just like that. Now this is tied on my side of the hook shank. Now we've got everything tied in all the way at the back. So you see when you look down on it, you've got the pheasant tail. Then I'm gonna counter. I'm wrapping the opposite way. Let's see if you like that. I'm gonna wrap the opposite way of the thread that's wrapped on my side, and the wire is wrapped on your side of the tail. Just right. Tied in just by the tip. Fed stuff feathers from Craig. Matthews. I think that's what this one is right here. It's from, from Craig. The one I was using, the one that I was using to tie those. I'm, I'm speaking of the tip, Stephen. I'm just on the tip. And they get kind of short once you get to the very end. And <clears throat> they're still usable, but I wanted to give myself every excuse not to fail when I'm live. So I just grabbed a, another piece. Actually, I got it on my tying kit, one that I had packed in there. So you see how I've got a perfectly flat, see how it's just perfectly straight, zero taper, nothing big, nothing small. You could stop there if you want to. But because this is a little bit big, um, being a size 14, I want to put just a touch of a touch of a taper in there. So I'm going to go like this all the way down and make a big wrap back up. And do it one more time. I'm not too worried about that. Okay, so you see we got just a minor little taper there. Am I doing anything that you are like, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. I know what um, when I see a lot of people, they'll tie both their materials on top and then they'll wrap them opposite ways. Some people will put um, super glue down right here. This is one of those times I've never, and I was thinking about this before. I was like, you know, I'm, I don't want to say the same thing that I always say, which is I don't have a problem because I lose my fly or I don't catch, um, you know, 30 fish on a fly before I've lost it or whatever. Or if I can get six out of them, I'm fine. I've never had one that's tied like this just disintegrate. Um, it hasn't been an issue. So when I wrap this, I'm going to take, I'm wrapping it counterclockwise or I'm counter wrapping, so I'm wrapping the exact opposite direction I normally wrap. And these are just going to be side by side wraps. And if one breaks like it just did, I'm going to do this. See, this is a good learning. I want that to break off right at the base. And I still have three left over. So, hey, don't pull it so tight, John. I was getting all excited. 
So I don't want them to come apart. There we go. So if you notice, you start getting a twist in it. You won't be able to see it, so I'll just put my finger right here and let go, and that's going to kind of work the twist out of my pheasant tail fiber. And you can always undo it, but these seem to be side by side touching wraps. If they overlap a little bit, that's okay. So see how I've got my, my body's wrapped and it looks good. I'm going to take my thread, drop it down, move my bobbin cradle out of the way. Bring this around. So now I've switched hands. I'm not holding my pheasant tail with this hand, thread with this hand. As opposed to wrapping my thread straight, cross it over towards the bead, do a loose wrap and a tight wrap. Now bring it back over, cross, loose wrap, tight wrap, cross, loose wrap, tight wrap. Now that's, that's locked in there. So this is kind of a technique doing tying it in this manner that um, I, that David McPhail does. And um, that's tying his weakest material in going the opposite direction. So my um, strengthening material, my strong material here is my wire. So it's going to go the same direction as my thread. Like that. And that just made this body bomb proof. Yeah, pretty much. I guess I could have put some, uh, thank you, honey. I guess I could have put some, some super glue on it, but it's not going to be necessary at all. Looks pretty good. Just like that. Oh, and Katie is back. And see how my, my tail right here, it's not disheveled. It's not too thick. If you put it too thick, that can, can decrease your sink rate. But um, it's got a nice little tail on there. Teeny tiny taper, but it is going getting fatter at the, at the bead. All right, last thing, and I'm going to do this 100% by Lance Egan's recipe. We've got just this regular old ice dub in shrimp pink, and that's what Lance uses for this one. I got this, I got this much out here, and that is way too much. So we'll split it in half and hopefully that'll be good. So I took about a third of it out. <laughs> All right, so I've got this, this much left here. So just take that out and I cut it even, even more. Like this is all I'm going to use. And, I, and I'm going to dub this the same way that I've shown, um, that showed how to do that, that K-POC, same way I've shown a lot, a lot of different things. So I take the dubbing and I put it like that. So it's holding, there you go, Katie, thank you. It's got the dubbing in between, see the little sparkle between the thread, dubbing, and my finger. So if the thread and my finger is the bread of the sandwich, the dubbing is the meat. And I take it and just with one little twist going the same direction, I've got it almost completely wrapped on there, just with one twist. And now I'll take the other little piece here, divide it in half, same thing, hold it there. And thank you, Ruby Tuesday. And that's probably about it. So I've got maybe not enough to do a whole another fly in my finger, but close to it. So that is very thin, but an inch from the fly. It's not even an inch. Maybe a little over three quarters of an inch. So really thin, really tight. So let's switch back over to the hook itself, please. What you laughing at, Al? Al, Katie's got, I think hey, Katie's. Buddy, he's laughing because I'm like, I don't drive. Oh. I'm like, I don't drive. <laughs> and I'm well. like, I really don't, like, on lap, like, unless I have to. Like, okay. It's absolutely, there's no other option. Katie's got a good picture that you submitted that I, I think do. she's going to share of you here in just a few minutes. Let me finish this fly, then we'll turn it over to Katie. So you can see that was that was quite a few wraps there, but I'd rather have nice tight wraps like that. So this one's turned out a little bit better than that, than that last junk one that we put on the Insta Twitter. All right, so we've got our fly almost done. Now you can kind of look and see how it's going to look. I'm just going to not super tight, not super, just wrapping. I'm just wrapping some thread here so I can see how that's going to look. 
And that that's about as much as I want. Pay back a few off. And now I'm going to, yes, of you. See you later, Ken. We'll see you bright and early next Wednesday night, hopefully. Um, yes, sir. So, all right. So we got that. We'll finish that on there. And you see we've got a nice little contrasting thread collar there. Looks pretty good. I like that amount. I can't see if find it. So here's the one that we posted, and here's the one we just tied. And I say I like the one we just tied a little bit better because I think that, that's why I said that one's got just a shade too much, too much, but somewhere around there is the um is the magic sauce. Just not to don't remember this the the that shrimp pink is it is a thorax kind of but it, it think of it more as a hot spot than like it needs to be a prominent feature on the fly that it's that body that segmentation that needs to be prominent not necessarily the the hot spot so quick one down um the thanks david so the next one's going to be a look, much more look difficult who, one look who's tying look who's tying who over at um going? watch him call it was it maggie valley flash out yeah i think where were you al man i got some uh, where were you al is your your yeah yeah you're on you were on definitely yeah where were you he was at maggie valley Mm -hmm. Look at them. Hard at work. I love it. We had to share that one. In addition to many, many good flies, clink hammers in many versions. So here we go. We have not my camera on me because I had to move my camera to do something else. So it's not turned on, but I'll go through these flies really quick. Okay. <laughs> so this is Billy Bugs and thank you, Billy Bugs. Uh, clean cameras, Bull X72, who had a couple of reels. That now was hit, one of them. That one, he used deer hair for the hackle. And we also have Dave Hall, 1396. Looking good. And David Smith. We saw David on here. And we got David Smith by email, I believe. And Freddie. I keep on saying Freddie Dodge. <laughs> Freddie's Flies. Another, there's Gray Ghost. And Jimmy. Josh Riston. I love all these different biot colors. Jay Wilson. And Ken, who just had to, just had to step out. Mike. Mike, 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 Mike. And... I'm going to say Pluey Boy, who is a new... Is Pluey Boy kind of new around here? He, he was the one that won last yeah. week. Uh, so, yes. Who was this one? I forgot about the name. Oh, is that Ryan? The, Ryan the, Flies? This Ryan, Ryan. The Canadian Ryan. Ryan, yes. Reese Flies. Reese Flies and Steve. Lovely. And if I missed anybody, I Steve? apologize. But that uh, was... That's the first time I've seen Steve's, and that turned out really nice. Yeah, and he puts blue on his background. That's kind of the signature, so mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that one's his. But, yeah, thanks, guys, for sharing those with us. And if I miss somebody, I certainly apologize. That was kind of a – that was a rush job on my part for sure. So do I need to go over and change out the lens on the – Ploy. Mike Ploy. Uh, so what does one O like boy ploy? Mike Ploy. Okay. Ploy, okay. Uh yes, probably. So are you are, you, are we moving on to yeah, the propping? Yes, we're gonna okay. move on to the propping, which is this one. Okay. This guy right here. And uh it is just a little bit smaller than not not too much, but it is smaller than this. So okay, just gonna move our the other camera around. And while she's doing that. Um, this is another one that let me stick it in the vise so you can get your focus going on it. This is one that when I thought that Barry was kind of I didn't know he's this is one he swears by. Yeah, it's good. Um, he said it's really really good, 
and I was like, okay, well, it seems simple enough to tie, but it's actually a little bit more, a little more complicated than I thought. So while I'm sitting here talking, I'm going to grab three feathers um, off of here. And this is just, uh, I'm not trying to like shortcut or anything, but I didn't want to get like super nice, like anything to this in like this is a cape that andy renzetti gave us and um it's a nice cape i just don't have a whole bunch of uses for the kind of middle sized feathers so i'm trying to find four that are really close to each other and i think that should be close enough so i'll pull these off and this is I, last night i was like okay i'm gonna have this ready and that ready Sir Barry, that's right. Um, I'm going to have everything ready. And obviously, I failed miserably on getting everything ready for you guys. So, Barry says that the hardest part about this, or the most time-consuming part, is this, is this, what I'm doing right now, and that's just stripping everything off. And that is not the case. Because we, we flew it back over to me. I'm sorry, I thought, I thought it was on me. Sorry. I've been stripping, I just pulled off th four feathers from like the middle of here. And if you've got, it doesn't matter what you got. They need to be rooster feathers, so they're kind of stiff. But I was thinking you could use um, like slopping feathers might work. If you've got like some woolly bugger hackle, that'd be fine. Um, you know, the, the key thing is that you've got uh, four that are very similar. Uh, and preferably pulled off the, the the same thing. So they're all kind of the same size and same taper. But um, anyway, so I have tied that one, the one that uh, we posted, the one I just showed you right there. That is the only one of these I've tied. So, and, and if you're asking questions about how to fish them, I will tell you in July or in um, May how to fish them. Cause I don't know, but it looks like just a, a shrimp fly that if you're fishing salt water here, you could, you could fish, but it's, it's son of a bum. Did not mean to rip that off. Try not to break your uh, feather. So all I'm doing is I'm taking the, the tip here. Where you, I'm trying to work. Which one would you like? Either, either, not that one, because I'm trying to. I'm just stripping these. Okay, so so I'm just. I'll grab my tip right here, and I'm pulling down. And just now I did that. I broke the tip off, and that's not what we want at all. And they all should relatively be the same length. This is a little time soon, but it's not like I'm cutting that much. Up. Maybe if I whisper to it, you yeah, get some. That's right. There's nothing like sitting around watching someone strip fibers off of a feather. It's almost as much fun as doing it yourself. Almost. But like I said, this was gonna be fun because the key that the important thing that I said and all that story was I've tied one of these ever. And um it did it was not like the super smoothest fly I've ever done. See, some of these fibers are looks like it's been cut or something. So that's another reason I wanted to use these for this. Okay, almost there. Got it. Almost. <laughs> All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up the tips here. Make, just to make sure they're all going to be kind of the same length. Back here. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to clean up my desk either before we went live. That was possibly a mistake too. Okay, so I got my tips kind of lined up. Hitch them. Bring them down like that. And unfortunately, my butts, I was hoping my butts would be lined up too, but they are not. 100% lined up, but I'm going to cut them off anyway. So that's probably that second one, that last one I pulled off. So I'm going to go like this, cut them off. So now I've got them lined up perfectly. 
so they're the same length. Okay. I've never seen that fly anything like it before. It, if you look up, oh gosh. There is a similar one that is a salmon fly. It's a shrimp salmon fly that has something very similar to it um, that very based it off of. I can't, remember, can't remember the name of it. Francis. Francis salmon fly. That's it. Look up Francis salmon fly and you probably see some similarities there. So I'm going to get a, a Arex SA, sorry, Arex SA saltwater hook minnow eight. If I can say it all, SA 280 minnow size eight. Red Francis. Okay. All right. So now, Katie, we can go over to the vise. Got a hook in the vise and we're ready to roll. I'm going to be using Semperfly. Katie, can we go over to the vise, please? Sorry, I was reading the comments for a second. Well, that's okay. Katie's doing a phenomenal job. If you could see her moving around, running around, she's been doing, working double duty tonight um, or triple. So this is 12 watt Semperfly Nano Silk. Oh, man. Get hair out of the mouth. So we'll start this. Just like this. I haven't used nano silk in a while. I don't believe. Since I haven't used it in a while, when you go to cut it like I just did, put your scissors on the hook and push. Don't try to cut it like this because it won't cut very well. It'll cut very smooth. All right. So the, as you can see with... With this one, see how we've got the four fibers going out on the, you know, every 90 degrees or whatever, and they're all splaying outward. That's what we're going for. So, I don't have to worry about wetting them or anything. You just kind of make sure they're splayed out the way you want. Have them go right so you get right about to the hook eye. Kind of loosely tie it in like this. Make sure that it's, yeah, that was good. So now we'll tighten it up. Hopefully two times a charm. And this time it's like, oh, okay, that wasn't too bad. So that's number one. Bring this down all the way on the bottom. Let's see how that's going to, hey, that was good like that. If it'll stay. Not still looks good. There we go. It's looking good. So we're two out of two right now. So getting them in the right spot and orienting the right way, I would say is, um, yeah, I'll say it's, is this it's, a trout fly? This is a salt. This is a technically a fly that's designed for sea run brown trout. So it is a saltwater fly for trout for brown trout. That's what it is designed for. Now I think when you get back from Norway, I think it'll be fun to try this out in the in South Carolina, just to kind of see, um, see how it works. But we'll see. So these are like little feelers. Here we go. So we got three out of four done. And finally, one last one. This is just one of those like, hey, man, maybe, maybe this one you can watch. Say maybe one of these days it'd be cool. But if you don't have a box full of Frenchies, that's what you need to work on. That's kind of why I did the Frenchies as well. Because I was like, you know, <laughs> this one's not going to be for everyone. David said it didn't have that Appalachian look to it. No, no, no it definitely did not have that Appalachian look to it. Or it doesn't for sure. 
But speaking of Appalachian look, I know Al is close and Wes and the Smokies is close. But um, when we were at, uh, we we're talking with Chad over at Smoke Mountain, Smoke Mountain Angler, he has, and he's invited us before. There's nothing, nothing too new, but he's once again invited us to do our show live Wednesday night at nine o'clock from Smoky Mountain Angler, their new location in, in Knoxville. It'll be fun to do it and have one of you guys actually just come over on site and hang out with us. Um, all right, so now we've got these done. So let's just kind of look and see what this looks like. So you can see, maybe you can see it. They're pretty much one going out each way. See how it's like that. Gonna, I can't hold my hand quite straight, but I'm going to take it now and okay, you just walked away or have her switch, but just trust me, I'm going to take these, pull, hold it like this, and I'm going to cut them. I don't really know how, exactly how long they're supposed to be, but we'll say that long. Yep, on Gay Street, David. So now we've got this. So you can see it a little bit better. Um, and I'm, I think I'm, I think that's either right or hopefully a little bit long because I can always, if, if I get them and Mary's, we get some on site, we're going to face like, those are too long, I can cut them. If he says they're too short, then I don't know. I guess I, oops. And if you ask me how long that is, I cut it to the back of my, the bend on my Renzetti. Couldn't tell you. Hey, 20 is 20. 20 is 20. 20, 20, what? I probably missed something, Steve. Okay, so I'm going to get some um, some deer hair. Now, I, I, had, I did kind of look around, and I went through a couple pieces. Try to find the piece that you have that either, that either is for the biggest stimulator or the biggest wing possible because that's going to make it where it'll flare deeper down into. Okay. So there's my tips right there. This particular piece of hair is not really going, it won't start flaring here. It's going to start flaring down in here. And on some, some, uh, a lot of the hair I've got to where it'll flare because I'm tying a size 14 or size 16. So I want to flare a lot right here. So, um, what Barry uses is roe deer hair that's been harvested in the summer, so they don't have the, the fibers, the deer hair fibers aren't as thick. So that means they don't flare as much. And that's that's kind of important. What are you alerting the authorities for? What did Al do or what's Al threatening to do? Oh, last I saw was he was going to tie it so I got an angler Friday night. I think that's what I saw. All right. So all it is, I, I just cleaned this out. Like you'll see me do a bunch of times. And now I've got my little stack here. And I couldn't tell you how much that is. Maybe it, it's not quite a pencil. Uh, I think I'm going to try to do it a little bit thinner than my last one. I might have it too thick because all we're going to do is put like a little beard, a little teeny tiny mini skirt on this, uh, on, on the, the back of this. Like think of it as a really teeny mini skirt. Um, and I think the last one's a little bit thick, so it might provide too much buoyancy, but I'm just stacking this now. I'm going to measure. So you see, I've got nice and stacked. I'm going to measure. So really where you see the color change, that's all I want to, to hang out past the bend. So about like, that is what I want. I'm going to take this. I'm going to cut it right where my fingers are. So now we've got that cut off. See how it's nice and smooth. So I'm going to put it right there because that's. I think that's what I want. I think we're fitting to see. I'm going to pinch this. And of course, it's too long there. So I'm going to cut it again. See if, this, see if I can magic this and make it work. Look at that. Kind of working. 
You got to really stick your tongue out for this one. I could have just tied it and not worried about it, but I'm going to try to get it right. All right. <clears throat> so now we got it right there. I'm going to put, I'm going to unwrap my thread, make sure it's kind of wide. Yep. It is deer, though, I promise you. I thought about using elk. I was like, I wonder if elk would work as well. So put a couple wraps here, pull down. I want to kind of work it around the hook shank just a little bit. I don't, I don't need to mash it. I'm not trying to spin it. Just kind of work it around the hook shank like that. So see how it kind of is? Just kind of working it around. I can pinch this. And then I'm going to kind of pull tight. See how it's flaring? I don't want to flare much. Just like this. If there's anything else I need to trim off, I will. Because the last thing I want to do is get everything nice and pretty and have my hook eye have the gob of deer hair in it. This piece, actually, that came that this one came from blue ribbon flies. there hopefully that's good because when i flare this it's going to go up like that i'm going to kind of work this around this is where i'm just going to kind of throw a bunch of thread on here i'm glad i'm using nano silk because i'm not worried about building up too much bulk and see how that that flare but not a whole bunch and that's pretty much how I want that to look. Yeah, see, that's that's it. Because, I mean, this is for a size, what's written on there, a size 12 stimulator. So here's a size 14 or 16 wing on the stimulator right here. So, I mean, it's not, there's not much just right there. It's, it's, well, it's probably a 14, size 14 stimulator. Um, and you can see how much longer the wing is here so that's kind of and i pulled down pretty i uh, pulled pretty you see that salt big salt water hook flexing i'm not gonna pull super super tight there that's pretty tight and i'm just making this smooth because just like wrapping quills and um other hackle like wrapping lots of stuff having a nice smooth underbody is very important and the one of the things when i did that my one other one that i ran into was finishing the fly and my last two or three wraps right here were kind of difficult to get just perfect because of my transition and my moose mane because that's the last material i'm going to tie in my moose mane kept sliding down right here <clears throat> I think that was good. I think my first one had a little too much, um, too much hair. So my, it went from high to low too quick right there. If you're going to Friday, come down and tie with the gang at Old Smokey. I don't know who you're talking to, um, but if anyone is down there, that would be an amazing time. I wish I could, wish I could make it. All right. So I'm going to, and if you're a, if you're a, oh gosh, a hackle, not hackle, a material snob, I don't want you to look at the material I was getting ready to use. Or did I hide it? I might have hid it, but I'll just be way too up front. Okay, here it is. So the material that I used before, I did use deer or moose mane, 100%. And I might use this again. But this right here, you know where that comes from? Oh, gosh, the good old White River. We can use the Nature Spirit. And I've got the Nature Spirit in about 500 colors. But the one thing I don't have is this. See how dark that is? Got the old Bass Pro Shop brand. See how dark that is? And this is white. So I, don't know, I just don't know if I have a moose mane that is just plain. Got purple, everything, but I don't know if we got plain. 
So I'm going to get one long one out of the Bass Pro. Pull that out. Let's see, it. Let's see if that'll work. Actually, you know what? I think I can make it work with, with this, maybe. Okay, so we're going to get a white one. And a not white one. I think that'll work fine. Yeah, that's what I think this one is bleached. The this moose main. So you can see how it's white and not natural. This is the closest thing I had to natural, and I don't want to waste any more of your time. But I'm, like I said, I've got a ton. This is just moose right here. This whole box is just moose. See? Moose hair. But I've got moose body. I've got speckled yellow moose body. I've got all these fancy colored gray olive moose mane. Moose mane is great to use, but as far as just like regular plain Jane Bass Pro Shops, where it's at apparently, because I don't have anything but Bass Pro Shops. Muskrat gray. So, oh well. <laughs> Well, it's okay. I mean, there's nothing. Unless you're going to get mad at me for using Bass Pro. All right. So, all right. So now I've got my two. I just ran it through my mouth. They, they I think, um, put a little moisture on them, helps them be a little bit more supple. Actually, we'll do it like this. I'm going to make one more pass up and down just to try. This thing's still pretty lumpy. But I think we're okay. Holding an angle, loose wrap, pull. I'm going to bring it back up, back down. Let's go ahead and pull this up. Moose and squirrel. Moose and squirrel is a com good combo for what? I like squirrel. Tastes good. Katie doesn't like cleaning it or cooking it very often, but you know. Yep, and when you say very often, I mean never. Yep, never, ever. Probably will never. My grandmother did once. Once, really? Oh, that's right. Your dad Probably told... more than once, but once I, that I was, I've been told about. Yeah, I've, I've heard that story. And then, then, like, someone get in trouble because they said it was chicken. And they're like, what the heck are you doing giving us chicken? Or once they found out, it wasn't. Some yeah, there was a laugh. There was a good laugh, but it was, everybody was like, well, that wasn't so bad after all. Yeah. All right, so I'm just going to put a whole big whip finish on here to try to once again get rid of that um taper or get rid of that slope going down of squirrel gravy and biscuits that's a good meal i have bull ankle joke i don't know well guys I, I i hate to say that that's one thing I've, I've heard about a lot never had squirrel gravy never i'm just a sheltered young man I think, I'm pretty sure I've shot squirrel before. I don't think I've ever um, had like squirrel. What what are the not what are the oysters of a squirrel called? Of a squirrel? Oh, guys, you guys can't even see what I'm doing. I'm sorry. So I'm just wrapping these up side by side. You don't want them to cross. You want them to be as close together as you can. Like this. What are squirrel? Um, you know. Someone said, I can't see the comments. Someone said what squirrel um, nuts, like acorns, you know? Walnuts. Well, I mean, there's not a lot of meat on them, first of all. How so. would you know? How, because I have watched alone all seasons. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> you got me there. Okay. So I'm going to deal with that one sliding down a little bit and we'll call you. What's up, Gary? We're talking about squirrel. Cajun seasoned fried um, squirrel stuffs. They come in twos. They come in pairs. 
and now you come on. So, ye stinking haw. All right, so we got our moose mane rat. That turned out pretty. I, I tell you what, don't ever tie your first fly live. You got to wait till your second one because the first one I did, it, it took a little, little bit. This part right here was just a bit tricky. But I think that is going to be just fine. There's a little gap right there you can see. But for the most part, that turned out okay. Give this a little twist, our little nano sip. I applied. Oh, David Smith applied to be one. Oh, the next year's. Is that like next year, David? Like, could we see you on a loan? Just, just when you're when you're learning, you can be like, yeah, I learned about this stuff through my buddy John Demuth. He's 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 a YouTube guy. <laughs> <laughs> They're like time on his, his his wife his wife he's always, she's always giving him a hard time no it's not naked and afraid it's just a regular normal alone naked and alone yeah no it's not naked they aren't afraid. naked they have they're allowed to bring like something to put on oh turn it back to to, to me real quick. I gotta tell a funny story you guys will since we get naked and afraid so Katie and I were fishing up uh, right outside of uh, the Great Smoky Mountains one day this has been a long time ago we're seven years ago. And um, we're staying in this cabin, and the people own the cabin. No, one the people. How do we find it? The producers come to our door. We were pulling driving up the driveway, and we met the producers, a truck or something. Yeah. And it was, and they were like, "Hey, just so you know, while we're, you're on this property, <laughs> we're filming naked and afraid. They were filming you naked might see and afraid. Some people running around. <laughs> they were like, what? They could be like naked yeah. people coming up knocking our door. Yeah, I don't know if they said you <laughs> might see them, but like. It was understood that like that was where they were, and and so we were like, "What? We didn't see anybody." That people were calling to come get them before the wake from the boat is out of sight. Oh yeah, I'll bet. Okay, David Smith. See, that's awesome. Well, we're gonna keep our fingers oh, crossed for man. you, David. I think through the orientation, basically, I go in twenty twenty five. We're going twenty twenty. Okay, but you are not allowed that is to. Awesome. To radio in to leave as the helicopter started yeah, to fly away. Yeah, like, do that. Yeah. Not you, at At all. least you got to go, like, come on, just like one day, you can make it. <laughs> all right, fly on the water. I'm not quite done yet, but getting ready to be. So let's wrap this thing up. We got Gary Barnes on here saying hello, and we got to make him feel special. So thank you, Gary. Um, so I'm going to use some UV uh, thin right here, and I'm going to... Two, if I can, I just want to get one kind of not not super light, but I'm not trying. I'm, I want I'm going to build up a bit of a body here. So let's put some on that side. Put some on this side. We'll connect them. Maybe put a little more on there. This side. Okay, I think I've got enough resin on there right now for the first coat. Now I'm going to let that soak in and make sure I've got everything coated because this is just the first step to finishing this fly. Can't celebrate quite yet. Get all the way back. What's kind of weird is, is when you do this, this kind of covers up some of your mistakes. If you didn't make a mistake wrapping your moose mane or it makes it look a, look a little bit better. So you get it nice and even. Like that. So we want to kind of slowly roll it around to make sure there's no big bumps. Okay. Okay. Now we'll blast it. Now I want to get it pretty uh pretty cooked because I want to put um some red marker on it so i'll give it that final color and then we'll put one more coat of resin on and then then it will be done almost all righty well, i'm gonna find my red marker see at least i've had everything kind of laying out yeah sorry i probably did it a little too long but 
I wrote me too long, did not long enough. So where's my towel? There it is. I can take this out of my mouth. Um, hello, Misha. She's text. We haven't been gone all day. Um, what was I saying? If you want to use a colored moose mane, you can, but this is just kind of a cool little effect here. You do want to cover. Oh, um, Barry says, and he is correct, that you can't, you got to put the resin on first because the, the moose mane won't take this marker too well. This fancy, everyone else uses fancy name brand, super cool markers. I'm just using Sharpie. It works okay. And you really should let it dry because I'm going to make the same mistake I made Monday night when I tied the first one. And that's how I'm not going to let it dry. And you'll see it kind of makes the resin run just a little bit. But that's that's it. And we'll give it just a second to hopefully dry. Now we're going to put a little, little bit more of the thin. Let's give it just a second. Okay. Come on. Come out. There we go. Okay. So you can see it kind of running a little bit. If I let it dry, it wouldn't have done that as bad. But that's okay. thing is I'm not taking the color off I'm just kind of moving around so it's not it's not like it's going to go anywhere and see I'm giving that the I'm I'm purposely building up a little bit of a little bit of body to this fly with this coat so you can see how I'm just kind of slowly if I see it having a high spot just kind of take my time rolling it at that spot until I like the shape of it. See how that shape's kind of forming the way I want. Oh, wow. It's looking kind of cool. The way it does that. Slow it down there. And shoot it. And there we go. I guess we lost, after my story about neck and afraid, we lost you. You're like, man, that was dumb. Don't you know better? Is this All a right. thicker resin for this coat? It's because Chasing Feathers got an ad there. Okay. It's, um, no, it's the, you should, could you push next, Mark? I'm just curious. No, it's the same thin. This is not the flow. It's and just for the fun of it. I'll show you the difference here. Because I, I would probably put a coat of flow or a coat of, um, this, this is flow. So the flow is like water. It, it's not going to build up hardly any body any um it'll i offer protection but not um build up and i want to build this up a little bit i wanted to now i don't just like that still look good <clears throat> All right. So, sorry, Mark. Could you could you push skip on that? I think literally, and we don't when we're live. We're even though it says we're monetized, like we made like forty six cents on the last video in the past week. So it's not like we're making any money on it. But I mean, eventually that'd be the goal to be able to, you know, maybe put some gas in the car, pay pay for some shipping. All right. So there we go. That is the finished. Um, let me dry this thing off. Propping. See how that looks? Let's go to the side view. Okay. A little better. So see how it's got little feelers there. And like I said, they're probably a touch on the long side. So they go out the four different ways there. We have a touch on the long side. But um 
Here's the one we posted, and here's the one that we just tied, and they look pretty darn similar. Um, so I think this turned out pretty good. Let's put let's hold them up side by side to the vise. Let's see, here's this one. And we'll put this one right here. Maybe. There we go. So yeah. Hey, we got twins. I'll probably tie a few more of those to, to bring, and then we'll be done. It wouldn't let me on the last one. The ones prior did. Okay. Oh, Steve. Foreign wives commercials. So yeah, so this is the uh, the propping, and I believe the Francis salmon fly, or the I think um, Jeff said that he looked it up and found the red Francis was what Barry or Clark based this fly off of, and uh, and kind of see the the now the I've doubled the number of these patterns I've tied. Um, the first one did give me a few fits and I was worried about tying the second one live, but it turned out okay. Um, and, uh, I'd say the third one will be even quicker. Uh, I think as far as me tying them, probably the first one, one of the problems is I put too much deer hair on. So that made the transition from the deer hair to the hook eye when I was wrapping the moose mane too steep. Um, so a little less deer hair on the second one made that one a little better. Um, but other than that, it's just grab some, uh, grab four rooster feathers, strip them, tie them in, put some deer hair around it, wrap some uh, moose mane, and that's it. Thanks. Hey, Todd, I didn't know you were on here. Todd, Jeff was saying uh, he needs an invite to go fishing. So why don't you come on down here and we'll get Jeff to come back up here sometime in the next week, week, sometime next <laughs> year or so. We'll all get together and go fishing. Um, Steve, I, when I first tied this one, I was like, this is going to be easy. And like an hour later, I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Um, yeah, it's kind of a weird look for sure. For sure, guys. If uh, you're not following us, give us a follow. If uh, I don't, Freddie, how am I supposed to say it? Um, smash that thumbs up. Leave us a comment after the, uh, after the show. Is that right? Misha just busted through. She knocked the fence down and now she's in here. Come here. Tell everyone bye. We'll let Katie. Is your is your camera? It's good? working now. Thanks. Okay. We'll let Katie say goodbye to everyone. And we sorry we were late coming on, but bye. we will see you guys next Wednesday night. Thanks so much for coming on, and give us a thumbs up. Thanks, Al. Go fishing this weekend. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next week. Bye.